Hello and welcome to My Secret Math Tutor. For this video, we want to work on solving inequalities with square roots. So think of something like this. Obviously, we're solving an inequality because we have that less than or equal to, and we're also worried a little bit about the square root. Now, when you start mixing these two, the two things together, there's just a few tips that uh, you want to keep track of. One has to do with the values that you can actually put into a square root. For this reason, we'll first write down values where the radicand is positive or zero. Uh, this will help us avoid having negative values underneath our square root. After that, we'll go ahead and solve the inequality directly. This means we'll try and get the uh, square root all by itself, square both sides, and really work on getting the x all alone. Now, after doing these first two steps, we'll actually get an interval for each of them. And so our actual solution will come from the overlap of both those intervals. And think of why that is. Uh, well, we're really doing two things. One, we want to make sure that our uh, values solve the equation, but we also want to make sure that they don't give us any negative values underneath that root. So the overlap will make sure that both of those conditions are met. Now, if you really want to take this a little further, you can go ahead and test values in your interval just to make sure it really is the right one. All right? So let's go ahead and grab that example and give it a go. So we want to solve 2 plus the square root of 5x minus 10 is less than or equal to 7. All right, before we actually get into the solving part, I'm just going to borrow the radicand. That's this guy down here. And we're going to see where it is, uh, say, greater than or equal to 0. Okay, so I have this little inequality, and let's go ahead and solve it. We'll move the 10 to the other side. and divide by 5. All right? So what this is telling me is that uh, in terms of the values that I can use, I can use uh, x is greater than or equal to 2. So maybe something like that. Where this guy is at 2. All right, we'll just kind of set that off to the side for a bit, and now we'll actually solve this thing directly. So let's see what we got. So 2 plus the square root 5x minus 10 is less than or equal to 7. All right, we'll go ahead and start this by isolating that root. Let's subtract 2 from both sides. Okay, that looks good. Now we want to square both sides. So if I square a square root, it's gone. And if I square a 5, I get 25. All right, looking good. Uh, let's uh, add 10 to both sides. And one last step, let's divide by 5. So x is less than or equal to 7. So this is giving us yet another interval. And in this one, we're looking at values that are less than, possibly equal to 7. So things on this side. All right, now it comes to actually building our solution. So I want all values that are in here and also in here. And you can see that the only values that will do that is if x is in the interval, say from two all the way up to seven, including both those endpoints. I can't go any farther than 7, because then I'd be out of this one, but I can't go any less than 2, or else I'd be out of that one. Okay, so there's our solution. Let's try this one more time, just to make sure we have the hang of it. Okay, for this one, we want to solve 4 minus the square root of 2x plus 1 is less than 1. So just like before, let's go ahead and grab our radicand, and find out where that is greater than or equal to 0. So 2x plus 1 must be greater than or equal to 0. And let's see, to solve it, we'll go ahead and subtract 1 from both sides and divide by 2. Okay, so I'm getting that x is greater than or equal to a negative 1 half. So think of that number line. Greater than or equal to a negative 1 half. Something like that. All right. Okay, now that we know what values we can use without uh, giving us a negative underneath the root, let's solve this directly. So 4 minus the square root of 2x plus 1 less than 1. 
Uh, we can start off by trying to isolate that root. Uh, let's subtract a 4 from both sides. Okay, that looks pretty good. Uh, I have a negative sign that I still want to move to the other side, so let's multiply both sides by negative 1. Remember that since we are working with inequalities, when you multiply by a negative, we need to flip that sign. Okay, it's looking better. Um, let's go ahead and square both sides. So 2x plus 1 is less than, or greater than 9. All right, now let's subtract 1. And finally, let's go ahead and divide by 2. So x is greater than 4. All right, here's our second interval. Now this one says all values uh, for x that are greater than 4. Notice how this one's actually pointing in the same direction as our previous interval. So when I look for the overlap of these two, it will actually include just the numbers that are greater than 4. So x is in from 4 to infinity. Now you might be asking, wait a minute, what about taking things between negative 1 half and 4? How come those don't work out? Well, go ahead and grab one to test out. If you were to grab 0, which is, you know, say between these two values, uh, what you'd get up here would be 4 minus the square root of 0 plus 1, or 4 minus the square root of 1. 4 minus 1 is just 3, and that is not less than 1. So what we're getting is that we're actually out of this interval over here if we pick too small. Now, if you pick on the other side of 4, like at 5, that is also included in here, so you're okay. All right, so this one, this interval really does solve the uh, inequality with the radical in there. All right, hopefully that helps out uh, clear up a few misconceptions. Uh, let me know if you want to see some more videos. Uh, I have some more videos listed on mysecretmathtutor.com.